Welcome to the Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware, and this is Steven Taylor. And before we get started, make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe to that YouTube channel for us. It helps us with our algorithms and all the things that we get to do that uh, that we like to just kind of we like we like to do this stuff, but, yep. and we do like to also have it out there to to get shared and everything. So please do that. So today, Stephen, I thought we'd talk a little bit about you know capacity of boilers, and one of the things that you know, we've been in this business a long time. You've been in it a lot longer than I have, but we're actually able to get more capacity inside mobile trailer, if you will. Um, and, and it's not getting that much bigger. The trailer's not getting that much bigger. We are getting more out of the boiler. So we what? Just keep pushing the envelope. Uh-huh. It's yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah. I think the largest was 350 and now it's, you yeah. know, it's up to a thousand. Yeah. When I started the, in the business, we we're 250 was the biggest we could build. Oh, okay. Then we went to 350, and then we went to 650 horsepower. Now we're 1,000 horsepower and using pretty much the same trailer that we built yeah. a little heavier four years ago. A little heavier. Yeah. A little, 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 little heavier. A few, yeah. few more wheels on. Uh-huh. But I want to talk about that because, you know, even in the water tube side, you know, it used to be that the largest, you know, was a 30,000 pounder or something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and we're getting more and more that uh, more, more capacity that we're able to put on the road. Recently, we've gone from like what we typically do in 82,500 pounds per hour on one of our water tubes, and we actually are getting 100,000 pounds an hour. Same footprint. And it's all the same footprint. And I, I started thinking a little bit about it. I thought a lot of people out here would really want to know, like, how, how do you do that? How do you keep the footprint the same, and how do you get more out of it? It's all about heating surface. So how you arrange the heating surface inside the boiler to where you can transfer the heat from the flame, from the gases, to the water to make steam. Mm-hmm. And so they're changing the design configuration, like on the water tubes. Um, they're changing the spacing of the tubes. Uh, get a little pressure drop through them, but we're able to just go to a little bigger fan to get more output from the boiler. So we're putting more tubes in them, get us more heating surface. We're taking some of the tubes and putting fins on them, mm-hmm. like you see in an economizer or you see on a a condenser, a condensing coil is what most people are, are uh, familiar with, those little fins on there. Mm-hmm. Those fins collect heat, transfer it to the tube, that transfers it to the to the water and creates more steam. So that's that's what we're doing on the water tubes. And on the fire tubes, it's pretty much the same thing, except it's the other way. Instead of on the fins on the outside of the tube, it's on the inside of the tubes. It's, mm-hmm. it's, they're called XID tubes. Mm-hmm. So it's rifling inside the tube. So instead of the gases, mm-hmm. instead of them shooting straight down the tube, You've had that rifling like you have in a bore of a, of a rifle, and it it makes that flame spin, and that pushes that flame out against the tube and forces it to transfer it through the tube into the to the water to make more steam. So it's all about technology and what we're doing to to get more out of that same same footprint. Is, is the exhaust gases is, is it is it velocity or is it more that it's staying in the tube longer? Residence time. Okay. It's all about, they call it residence time, which is the time that stays in there. If, you know, it's, it's, if you, the faster you push it through there, the less heat transfer you get. That, that has to stay there in residence time in order to, to in order to transfer. And right. that rifling in there, like the fins on the tubes, it forces it to stay there longer. Therefore, you get more heat trans- transfer into the water. And actually, you know, to, to be able to get more, um, we only have so much area in the, the the trailer itself, so actually I have to stretch, right? Yeah, we've had to go to a 57 foot trailer on those thousand horsepower, mm-hmm. so that we can still have a hundred percent size water softeners, size for 100 percent makeup. The deerators, 10 minute storage, still size for 100 percent makeup uh, with with all the pumps and everything, and then the boiler in there with the Limpsfield burners, really high efficiency unit, and and we just had to. Had to stretch it out. Three right. axles, two sets of dollies. It, it just lots of things we had to do to get where we're, we're at today. Right now, and obviously you keep the 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 boiler footprint the same, but burner obviously changes yeah. as well to be able to get the output. Yeah, yeah. You have to go to a bigger burner. There's there's not much you can do. You have to have you have to be able to put the fuel in. You got to be able to put enough air in there to mix with it. So both of those have to continue to go bigger. You you can't keep them the same size. They have to go bigger. Well. The found interesting too is that once we go to a different emissions on the large water tube, when we go to a different emissions, that we don't get as much capacity out of that particular boiler. So on a 30 ppm, we may be able to get a hundred thousand pounder, 
uh, 100,000 pounds, but when you go down to maybe a 7 to 9 ppm, it changes. Yeah, it does. And that's all because of the blower and the amount of FGR, flue gas recirculation, you have to bring back in in order to get those emissions down. You just can't, you know, with that same footprint, use the same blower. You could you could probably do it if you put a whole different blower on it and change the whole, whole, the whole burner out. But yeah. in order to make it versatile for the rental fleet, then, you know, I, I'm reducing the unit to an 84,000 pound per hour unit. Same footprint as 100, but at, at 9 ppm, I'm at 84,000 pounds per hour. Or at 30 ppm, I'm at 100,000 pounds per hour using the same footprint, same blower, same configuration. Yeah, it's really cool that we're getting more, but uh, probably the, 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 the even cooler thing is that we're getting, um, we're able to get that, that uh, emissions down um, and we're not necessarily having to have an SCR. Yeah, not not having to use an SCR. A lot of people don't. A lot of companies don't want that um, that other chemical compound in in their plant. It's either urea or ammonia, and you're going to have some slip, and you have the the chemical to deal with, and, and they don't want that in their plant. It's another regulation they have to go through. They would rather not do that. Is it? Uh, so we've come up with this uh, Victory's design, this 9 ppm burner, and and it's. It's working really well. I mean, we pulled it down and we were at, you know, 4.8 ppm on high fire. Mm. And so we, we decided we don't need to be down below five. Nine's the number that, that we need to meet. So we jacked it back up until we're in the mid to upper sevens. And that gives us a little more, a little more leeway, a little more flexibility with it. Well, also the SERs actually do take a lot more time and in installation to be able to to so another mm -hmm. truckload, of another that. truckload of equipment, more installation, more expensive installation, more equipment to keep up with, more maintenance. Everything is just more when you have to go for the SCR. Yeah. Well, good stuff. I just thought about it the other night about the different capacities. Thought this would be good for you guys to hear, yep. and appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on the Blowing Point. Point.